All right, welcome. So I just want to do another ac exercise here of converting a grammar to Chomsky normal form so we can get a little bit of practice with it. Uh, and I've started with this grammar here. Maybe let's just take a moment to look at this grammar. What we'll notice with this grammar is that um, this one kind of has a simple form we maybe notice from some grammars we've designed before, like A by itself, the rule A by itself, will make equal number of zeros and ones before terminating itself with an epsilon. So that would be zero to the n, one to the n. And B is just the other way around, one to the n, uh, zero to the n. So this grammar is just kind of a weird one that says, well, it's either zero to the n, one to the n, or it's one to the n, zero to the n. It just flips the order of the ones and the zeros and, and it lets you have e strings of either kind. I've actually just chosen this as my example grammar because uh, I needed some grammar to convert. So uh, let's go ahead and use this. Now, the first thing that we normally do um, is in converting a grammar to Chomsky normal form is we create a new rule that uh, is our new start variable uh, in case our start variable appears on the right hand side. Our start variable is s. It does not appear on the right hand side of any of our rules. So if I was doing this by hand as I am right now, I'm going to know it's redundant to add a new start variable. I don't need it in this case. So I'm actually going to skip over that first step. So if you wanted to, you could create that new start rule s0 goes to s and add it to this grammar, but it doesn't do anything for us in this case. It doesn't do anything to help us convert it to Chomsky normal form. So I'm gonna actually not do that. It's just gonna make it a little easier for us. So instead, I'm gonna start with the first rule, which is to eliminate epsilon rules, okay? Epsilon rules are rules that um, we should only have in one context, and that's when S goes to epsilon. So I'm gonna start with this A goes to epsilon rule, okay? now. What that means is when we have a rule like this, s goes to a, we also want to now replace any occurrences of a on the, on the right hand side here with epsilon. So I'm going to say instead of going s goes to a and I know a goes to epsilon, I'm going to take out a as the middleman there and I'm just going to say s goes to epsilon here, which happens, remember, to be an okay rule. We're allowed to have that epsilon rule, so that one's okay. Now we can also do it in our rule a. A had this rule already that said 0, A, 1. Well, we can replace the A in this rule with an epsilon instead. So that would give us 0, 1 as a possible outcome there. And now we've eliminated both of our epsilon possibilities, so we're good. And I want to just double check here something, because what this is now saying is A can still make equal numbers of zeros and ones on the left and right, but it can't make zero zeros and ones because it has to terminate with at least one copy of a zero and one copy of a one. But we haven't eliminated that possibility from our grammar because we've moved this epsilon up to the start saying you can pick zero if you want, you just have to do it ahead of the ahead of time. You can't do it um, after you've chosen A or B as your pattern. Now we know that B is the same here. So B also has this epsilon rule, and it also would have created another kind of copy of this epsilon rule up here. I'm not going to duplicate that up there. That's redundant again. So instead, I'm going to just note that the B rule is going to change in the same way. It's going to have one B zero, but instead of ending with an epsilon here, it's going to end with a one zero. Okay, so now we've eliminated all of our epsilon rules, except for the one that I have already mentioned we're allowed to have up here, so we're good. So now what I want to do is eliminate what we call the unit rules, like S goes to A or S goes to B. These are unit rules. So these rules still existed in our grammar after our last change. And the way we do that is we say, okay, let's, uh, let's replace our S goes to A. We go see what A goes to, and we take all of those rules and we add them to the S rule as well. So now we can say S, let me put a little, S goes to 0, A, 1, or 0, 1, or, now I could put the B in there too, but I want to do the B replacement as well. It's also a unit rule, so I'm going to go instead 1, B, 0, 1, 0. Okay, now I've replaced the A rule and the B rule. The epsilon rule is there to stay. Now A can still go to A or 0, A, 1, and 0, 1, and B 
also unchanged. Okay, we're getting closer to Chomsky normal form, but um, we still have some of our rules that are a bit too long, and some of our rules have more than one terminal in them that we're not allowed to. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to make a change here. I'm going to add two new rules. I'm going to call it a sub 0, which goes to 0, and a sub 1, which goes to 1. And now what I can do is I can go back to these rules up above here and change all existences of the terminals 1, 0, 0, 1, and so on, and add, and add these two rules in instead. All right, so now after that change, now what we can see is we only have variables on the right-hand side, and we, uh, except for, for our two special rules here. The only problem that we have left is some of our, our strings are, are too long, and we need to instead have strings that are only of length two. So let's make that final change here. So what I wanna look at here is we've kinda of got, in our strings that are of length three here, we have this substring here, a sub a1, a sub a and then a sub one and then also we have b a sub zero b a sub zero so i'm going to make two new rules here i'm going to make c that's going to be a a sub one and then i'm going to make d which is going to be b a sub zero and then i can rec er, replace those occurrences with my new rules to get them in the proper form all right, and at this point, we can now see that all of our rules are in the right form. They have two variables on the right-hand side, or they have a single terminal on the right-hand side, or it's epsilon, and that only occurs in the start rule. So we've got a Chomsky normal form version of our original grammar. Again, as we notice, our original grammar is a little bit more compact and easy for us to use as a human, but this normal form might be more useful for more easy for us to prove something about or to um, uh, compute on. All right, let's take a look at another example. All right, let's look at this example here. This example is another sort of, you know, I made it just simply, uh, it, it's for the language contains the substring 0011. On the left-hand side, we can make any string of zeros and ones. That's what the rule A does. So this is just contains the substring 0011. So let's again try to follow our uh, model where we're going to begin by making a new start rule uh, if our start rule appears on the right hand side. Again, the start rule doesn't appear on the right hand side, so I usually skip this rule in that case um, uh, because it's just redundant. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the epsilon rules. And the epsilon rules in this case, we've only got one of them, a goes to epsilon. Let's start with the rule a by itself. So if a goes to epsilon, we still have 0a, but we should also get 0 then, replacing the a. We could have 1a or just the 1 by itself again. We want to put the epsilon, but that's the rule that we're eliminating. So we're going to go back up to s and see are there any occurrences of a where we can do this too as well. Yes, certainly um, before the string 0011, we might want to eliminate that a, so we could get 0, 0, 1, 1, a. Actually, I'll put the original rule in here first, and then I'll put that one in, 0, 0, 1, 1, a. And then we could also have replaced the second occurrence, so we could go a, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then finally, we need to be aware, of course, we could replace both of the occurrences, and this is important in this one, 0, 0, 1, 1. The only way to get the substring exactly 0, 0, 1, 1 with this current version of the grammar is to pick this rule here, okay? We notice after eliminating this epsilon rule, we haven't created a new s goes to epsilon rule. Sometimes we end up with that if uh, epsilon happens to be in our language, but in this particular language contains the substring 0, 0, 1, 1, Epsilon is, of course, not in that language, so that's why we don't see it showing up in the top rule. Okay, so we've eliminated our epsilon rules. So what's next? The next thing on our list, actually, are unit rules. And we can do a quick check. Are there any unit rules in here? There are none. There would have only been two possibilities. The redundant A goes to A or S goes to S or S goes to A. And we don't see S goes to A. So no unit rules, so we get to skip that one as well. 
So instead, we're now just trying to make sure everything's in the right form. One thing that's out of form here is we have lots of strings that are mixed strings. That meaning they have variables and terminals in them. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new, var a new variable a0 goes to 0, a1 goes to 1, and now we can start replacing those rules up above with their new versions. Okay, now all we've done is we've replaced all the occurrences of zeros and ones up in the original rules up here with their counterparts a0 or a1. You can see we're getting a lot of these strings a0 or a0, a0, a1, a1 because we had all these strings 0, 0, 1, 1 up above there. Um, we really only have one step left, which is to take these extra long strings. So everything down below here is of the right form. It's only in S we have these really long strings and we need to replace them with shorter strings. And since each one of them contains this A00, A11, I'm gonna start by creating two new rules here, A00 and A11. Now this isn't exactly what our construction said, but I'm I'm doing this by hand, so I'm going to try and do things that save me a little bit of time. So this A00 is going to go to A0, A0, and this A11 is going to go to A1, A1. And then what that means is we can start replacing occurrences like this with A00, A11. So I'm going to go and do that and see how that helps us. And we can see what that's done is it's shortened. At least this one is now of the right form, but this one has three, this one has three, and this one still has four. So we still need to do some more shortening. So actually, again, anticipating I already know, I see there's a pattern appearing in all of them. So I'm going to go A0011 goes to A00, A11, and I'm going to go do this again. I'm going to go replace these occurrences like this one here with the new variable a0011. So now this rule only has two and we're good to go. So I'm gonna do that with this one here as well. And now I can do it one more time over here. However, we're still left with three variables there. And now I feel like, I okay, I don't have a good idea. This is the only one left to, to use. So I am gonna use the form that was given to me in the construction. I'm gonna just grab these two and make them into their own rule. I'm just going to call this one B for convenience. And so now we can make that first rule A, B. And now we can see, yes, everything. Okay, two variables, two variables, two variables, two variables, two variables, two variables, one uh, terminal, one terminal, one terminal, one terminal, two variables, two variables, two variables, two variables. Boom, we're in Chomsky normal form. So we've done it. Okay, so. Uh, these were two more examples of how we can convert our grammar into Chomsky normal form just to give us a little bit of practice. If you need a little bit more practice, go ahead and make another grammar and see if you can do that. Trade it with your friends. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks a lot for watching.